Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our interview with Eric Yu. Eric is a principal solution architect within the data ethics practice at SAS. Eric has supported financial services, health, and life science customers for the past 18 years with their SaaS technology adoptions, analytics, maturity, and cloud uh, migration journey. And today, Eric helps, helps inform, guide, and activate an infrastructure of trust at SaaS by developing a trustworthy AI risk management methodology that incorporates tech ethics and AI regula regulatory concerns. So Eric, thank you for joining us for our Risk Management Show podcast recording today. Pleasure to join you. Absolutely. So I believe that we will have a very thoughtful conversation on the topic of ethical uh, choice awareness and sensitivity to AI risks. So Eric, could you tell us a short story about your career path, what brought you to where you are right now, and uh, about maybe your role as a principal solution architect within uh, your uh, practice and how it relates to governing uh, trustworthy AI? Sure. I, I, most of my professional career has been with SAS in uh, pre-sales capacity, a technical role within SAS. Um, I have always uh, worked with uh, various teams to uh, find solutions for various business uh, issues uh, presented to our SaaS customers. And so in that capacity, I have leveraged um, the, not only the technical um, know-how, but also understanding of the business issues to apply the technology appropriately for where their customers are in their journey in resolving some of those issues. And like many organizations, um, uh, they are struggling with obviously various data uh, considerations uh, and formulating a, a solutions to address their needs using technology like SaaS. And so uh, over the years, I cultivated that um, those various skills as well as uh, industry knowledge and applied them. But in my latest iteration, I'm uh, uh, applying the ethical lens, uh, especially given the technology and the ubiquitousness of applications of those AI type of systems. It is, I think, a very uh, uh, poignant moment to kind of uh, advise our customers on some of the appropriate use for certain business contexts, given the general applicability of the AI systems and the potential risk that it may pose uh, for some of the uh, applications or use cases that customers are, are exploring. Fantastic. So, so of course, SaaS is known uh, for its commitment to ethical AI and uh, yeah, could you could you perhaps uh, um, and also yeah you discuss this as could you tell us walk us through the journey of translating ethical principles into practical operations within your company? Um, I think SAS, like any other organization, have a, a value based uh, organization um, in its history. Uh, we have done. Uh, many important work within the various important sectors like healthcare, as well as financial services, uh, public sector with uh, work with our federal governments and state and local governments as well, along with a myriad of other um, uh, verticals that SAS um, uh, provides capabilities in. However, uh, I think that um, it is important to address what those values are, uh, what we uh, how we present ourselves in the market, what, how we conduct ourselves with our customers, with our employees, and how we want to impact the community at large, uh, wherever we operate. Um, and so it is important for SAS to uh, take those values that we have and define those principles. And I think in the uh, trustworthy AI journey, many organizations are in that process of having to define what those principles are that that they value and that roots all their um, uh, engagements with their customers, with their community and with society at large. However, I think that uh, at this point in the journey, organizations have to go beyond just the principles. How do they operationalize these values and principles that are firmly uh, rooted within the organization, but translate that to their uh, business operations? How do they translate that to uh, individuals who are uh, employees who are working within those organizations? 
and where there are ethical concerns or choices or dilemmas that arise in any uh, business engagements, that they're able to apply them and provide some guidance along the way. Um, this effort requires a, a comprehensive approach of not only understanding and conveying these principles to the employees, but also how do they intend to apply that principles and manifest it within the output of the business that these organizations are um, in. And at the same time, uh, be able to understand uh, the cultural dynamics, not only within the company, but the dynamics outside the company as well. So you need to understand some of the cultural norms uh, that these organizations are operating in and uh, understanding the local customs as well as local uh, regulations, relevant legal frameworks that are driving some of the uh, behaviors that uh, these organizations need to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. uh, could you share some examples or challenges or insights that you have encountered, uh, maybe without uh, dropping the names, when involving stakeholders in the AI development process to ensure ethical ethical consideration are met uh, at all? It is a um, a whole company um, initiative and effort, uh, meaning that it is not just a one department that has a responsibility for in ensuring that the trustworthiness of the systems that they leverage or that they provide are uh, in alignment with the various principles and values of the organization. And so whether you are in the development side, whether you are in the design or even in marketing or even testing of these systems, you need to have an awareness of the issues that these systems may pose and then within your unique role, uh, whether you are uh, down in the trenches of uh, developing these systems on a programmatic level, whether you're doing this on a testing level, or you're in the uh, management or executive level, you need to have a comprehensive view of these type of risks that pose um, by these systems, and then determine whether there are certain things that you need to be mindful of and you need to mitigate at the level and the role that you're in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I would like to ask you a personal point of view. What is the major misconception in the field of AI ethics and, and that you kind of strongly disagree with? That I strongly disagree with. Yeah, kind of misconception in the field that uh, you are strongly disagree with, just to, to understand your unique point of view. You know, we often talk about um, AI ethics as if it was a new a concept. Ethics, we apply that in our everyday role, whether we are individuals as parents, uh, as uh, employees, or as members of our community. We always evaluate whether we should do certain things, not necessarily that whether we can do it. Uh, the way I think about it is, you know, a lot of things are permissible, but not everything is responsible. And it is the same mindset that we need to have when it comes to our dealings within our company. However, it hasn't been, uh, I believe, a normative behavior within organization to discuss these type of things. Um, I think that there is apprehension as well as um, lack of familiarity and normalcy to discuss these ethical dilemmas that are posed when dealing with some of these uh, ubiquitous AI systems. And it is important for individuals to raise these concerns where it is appropriate within the context of the organizational values and principles that underlie some of these decisions that need to be made. At the end of the day, I think the individuals have the responsibility that they need to raise it uh, in, according to the process laid out by the companies. And it is um, you know, the responsibility of everyone to, um, to be respectful of the concepts and the respectful of different perspectives that people may have. And when discussing these things, do so in a manner that fosters a really the assessment of the risk and not necessarily having a consideration that says, well, one perspective is right or wrong. It's at the end of the day, a choice that we all need to make. And we need to make a choice based upon the risk appetite of our organization. All right. So let's dive into the 
Ethics Circles Ambassadors uh, program that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And what was the inspiration behind uh, creating this program? And how does this work to raise ethical uh, uh, choice awareness within uh, SAS? Yeah, it really stemmed from the, uh, the extension of the concept I just mentioned, which is it is a, a whole company readiness and requires all stakeholders to be involved. What does that meaningfully mean? Well, there are participants within organizations who naturally have a curiosity or passion for this type of topic. Other folks may not be familiar or may have hesitancy to have these type of conversations. And so by creating a safe environment to have a discourse on these type of concerns raised because of the use or design and development or even deployment of these AI systems, um, you need to have a broader perspective about what, what are the types of risks that these systems pose. As an individual, I may have a certain perspective because I am the coder. But however, because of the social technical nature of these AI systems and the scale at which they can operate and make decisions in an autonomous fashion, having other in, uh, perspective from other individuals within the organization really helps flush out what are some of the uh, risk profiles that we ought to consider? And so that is the whole premise behind a, a multi-stakeholder and diverse uh, uh, multidisciplinary stakeholders involvement is to solicit these type of inputs, to consider them, and then provide that feedback to the management or the decision makers. And th the ethics circles ambassadors program that you just mentioned is a manifestation, it's an instance of that concept of multi-stakeholder, multidisciplinary, and diverse input. The Ethics Circles Ambassadors Program is allowing opportunities to meet together, to have these type of conversations, and then we enable external speakers to come in and provide an external, uh, either subject matter expert opinion or perspective, or guidance on some of the latest thinking or things that uh, we ought to consider as an organization. And so this Ethics Circles Ambassador Program is a pilot program that I'm leading in order to help facilitate that robust conversation and then help these participants actively practice some of the knowledge about AI ethics, about trustworthy AI, and the necessity for these type of considerations and concerns and then within their own capacity, within their own role, be able to either influence or to practice some of the teachings that we are promoting within our within our program. Right, interesting. So, of course, we know that the field of AI ethics and uh, total AI and ML uh, is rapidly evolving. What steps can uh, our organizations take to foster a culture of uh, continuous learning and awareness regarding the ethical application? And, how do you stay updated on the latest development and how do these things uh, work uh, at SAS? Yeah, the latter question is difficult. So I'll, I'll address the first one. What can uh, companies do? Um, one, I think it requires um, a comprehensive view, as I mentioned before, a comprehensive approach, which means that you need to have uh, a cultural, um, raise the cultural awareness and sensitivity to these type of issues. You know. I think it would be hard pressed for any organization to say we're not using any type of AI system within the organization. Some organizations are actively uh, creating and designing and deploying these systems on behalf of their customers. However, many organizations, if not all, are probably most likely using some sort of AI systems within the organization. So one, are you using them and how are they using them? And do they pose certain risks um, that you ought to be concerned with, or at least be aware of. And then the sensitivity, uh, it comes from being, exposing the employees, exposing the management to these type of concerns. So the net net of that is that you need to train your employees on um, some of these risks and um, downside uh, unintended risk of these type of systems that you need to be concerned with. Um, the other thing is you need to be mindful of the, some of the regulations that are coming down the pipeline. We often talk about the relevant uh, legal framework that you need to be aware of and operate it under. It doesn't mean that you're approaching this trustworthy AI as a matter of compliance, uh, but rather you need to be mindful of these requirements that are being proposed 
um, one example might be the EU AI Act and the necessity to conform to some of the um, requirements for documentation and transparency for high risk AI systems. And having that awareness helps bring some more concreteness as well as some initiate some actions or activation of some teams or conversations that are required to address them. And then uh, lastly, you know, wh when you are engaging in this type of uh, conversations with your employees, I really believe that having management support uh, of these type of roles and teams within organizations are crucial, um, as well as having that grassroots efforts to find how you can operationalize them at a more discrete level. How are you going to uh, identify, how are you going, going to assess and then mitigate these risks as you move forward? One thing that is key is that you shouldn't have to start from scratch. Leverage your existing um, risk management uh, frameworks, uh, tools that you have already, and then leverage those platforms, leverage those systems, and incrementally ensure in your mitigation of your AI system risks. All right. So let's uh, uh, discuss for, individu for individuals who are interested in pursuing a career in the AI ethics. What advice would you give them uh, and what skills and knowledge uh, should they focus on developing? It's, um, we, as I mentioned before, having that uh, multidisciplinary approach um, brings a wealth of um, dimensionality perspective into any conversations related to AI ethics, especially when it's because of the social technical nature. So I think it's a great time for people with all, uh, from all walks of life, uh, having a unique lived experience and bringing that perspective into conversation is valuable. Um, also having uh, humanities and understanding of these societal issues. Do not just approach this as if it was a technical solution. Uh, rather, it is one that requires your background in the various humanities, your background in technology, your background in legal, your background in the lived experience that you bring to the table and share that uh, insight uh, um, and having uh, a direct contribution to identification of these risks um, that people may not necessarily see. They may have blind spots. And by sharing your perspective uh, with that background in mind, I think greatly lends to uh, identification of more risks as well as potential uh, for how to perhaps mitigate them. So. Mm -hmm. For some of the younger career um, entrants into the workforce, I would highly encourage them to pursue and, and their curiosity within the AI ethics, not only from the tech standpoint, because it's the next big uh, technology that need to uh, be mindful of and perhaps ride that tech, uh, technology wave, but also approach it from a desire to do good. Uh, desire for you to want to uh, live, live a good life for yourself, for your organization, as well as the people that are either they're going to be using them or being impacted by them. And if we could kind of have that perspective in mind um, as we recruit some of the younger uh, uh, um, career-minded folks into this field, I think we will all benefit from it. Great stuff. So. Uh, could you also share a, any resources or initiatives that you think uh, our listeners should explore to further the understanding of ethical choices in uh, AI and the risk mitigation? Yeah, I, I think when I began this journey, um, at first it seemed like there wasn't a whole lot of frameworks, but in the last uh, several years, it seems like there is no, no shortage of frameworks for you to explore. In fact, it, it's, at times it feels like a Chinese uh, menu. There's so much choices, so many frameworks, so many different approaches. And while that is good, it does become overwhelming at times. Um, I think a, a, a primer on tech ethics, um, data ethics will be crucial for baselining of, uh, the people, the stakeholders involved. Um, I think it, it brings some structure to how one may approach from an ethical lens perspective. 
So there are many academic institutions that I relied upon for providing some of that. Um, the one that I personally leveraged, not necessarily you know, what my organizations uh, leverage, but I personally lean towards the Santa Clara University's uh, Mark Less Center for Applied Ethics. They have a, a very mature, well thought out, as well as well curated content that um, I think will serve as a great basis for any knowledge base and concept sharing on AI ethics. Um, secondly, there are um, contents and frameworks that are being produced by, by government organizations. A case in point in the US, there is what's called the NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology, AI Risk Management Framework. Um, it is a, a high level framework. It is well thought out. It has been participated. The formulation of this framework has been participated, um, involved participation from um, you know, the academia, the NGOs, um, as well as multitude of private and public organizations. And so the work that Alham Tabasi had um, provided with this work, I think could provide some structure to what people ought to consider, or what organizations ought to consider when it comes to uh, de-risking some of the AI um, unintended harms from these systems. Fantastic, a great resource. So if we summarize our interview, if, if someone who is listening to this interview would like to walk away with one or two major takeaways, what would that be? Um, you got to start. Um, I, I think that uh, there's no better time than now to start thinking about these concerns uh, about AI systems, especially given the, uh, the hype that is going on with generative AI. It is, um, it is a transformational uh, technology of our time. And it is something that we all need to be familiar with, but also need to go in there with not only um, a, a perspective what the technology provides, but potential for ethical concerns in the use of these type of systems. And so to foster that understanding, I think people need to have a, a diverse input from stakeholders within and as well as outside the organization, bring them together to understand not only the impact that it has on our organization, but the greater impact it may have on our communities and society at large. So that is one, uh, main point number one. Uh, the second point that I would like to uh, make sure that um, people come across from this is that you need to be intentional. You need to have a mindset of leadership in AI tech ethics. You need to be intentional in establishing cultural norms and fluency uh, about these type of uh, concerns and to promote their um, fluency and communication within organization by fostering teams that have a natural curiosity or passion for this type of thing uh, of um, uh, topics and concerns. And then uh, put in a, a structure within organizations such that you are able to govern these um, teams as well as business processes. I think that could be a great start to um, um, the AI ethics conversation within the organization. All right, fantastic, Eric. That's where all my questions. Perhaps if I for forgot to ask you something that you think uh, is important to our audience, please go ahead. Um, it's an exciting time. I, 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 there's no shortage of content. Be aware, be knowledgeable, read content. There's no shortage of them. However, I think you need to have some awareness of basic terminologies and things that um, uh, will help in that journey. Um, there are wealth of resources that are available out there. They can certainly uh, uh, reach out to me and I could provide some guidance on that as well. But um, it's, it requires a, a whole, uh, I mentioned before, a whole uh, company readiness. And I think this also requires at a, at a societal level, citizen involvement. And if anything you could do to be knowledgeable about this space, to be aware of how these systems are being used and it's impacting you, then you can begin, begin to address some of the questions you ought to ask of the organizations, of our public officials, of the uh, use of appropriate use of these systems. And I think that's a, a great starting point for uh, someone who is not in the risk uh, management or operations. 
All right, fantastic, Eric. Thank you again, and uh, hopefully we will uh, speak maybe in a few months or something about uh, another topic. And uh, I always we are always uh, happy to invite guys from SAS to to discuss any topics about risk management related. Bye bye. I welcome that opportunity. Thank you, Boris.